Today we are gathered here to respect and reflect on the life of our sister Inez Walcott who has completed her earthly pilgrimage and has, on, and has passed on to a hope beyond the grave. The family and acquaintances we collectively extend our sincere condolence and trust that you will find comfort in the thought that our sister has extended, has entered more fully into the company of the redeemed family in God's eternal home. It seems to me that God who made man in his own image or likeness never intended that mankind would journey through life on his own. To face the difficult challenges and difficulties life's experience would bring is a human mistake to believe that we can get through this life of human experiences 
without divine assistance. One man, that's a prophet said, as Jeremiah was speaking, God said, I know that the way of man is not in himself. He, the prophet, welcome correction, but with judgment, as God would bring him to nothing. Having said that, we could commence the singing with the hymn, We Love the Perfect Way of God. The hymn book is number 32. We love the perfect way of God, the lowly path of Savior Trump. Pilgrims and strangers shall we in the word of prayer before proceeding. Our Heavenly Father, we look to thee today to take control of our gathering and that thy voice could be heard to hearts individually. We thank thee for thy divine interest in the human creation because at the beginning of time thou didst breathe the breath of life into man thus making him a living soul. 
And we thank thee for all the provision thou hast made ever since, providing an earth that we can dwell in and be comfortable, and also blessing us with the wisdom to take care of thy creation. And so today we want to give thanks for the time and of the send thy son and made known to us of a divine plan that we could go through this world and eventually pass through this world and dwell with thee eternally. We thank you for the gospel story that tells us and continues to speak to us of the life of thy son Christ Jesus. And we recognize that even now he is at thy right hand interceding for us because we are but creatures of the dust. And today we have a living example of one who has loved and served thee, one who gave her heart and life to thee, and was able to complete her earthly pilgrimage with distinction. Have mercy upon us as we gather here, Save us from distraction, even in our shells, in our thoughts, in our surroundings, in others. But help us to think soberly of the time coming when we too shall go the way of all the earth. Accept our thanks for mercies extended to each one that breathes the breath of life. Help us to number our days, as the Moses said, that we might apply our hearts to wisdom. We thank thee for all those who have put forth the effort to join with us in this service of remembering our sister. She deserves it, thou knowest, Lord. Have mercy upon us, and as we proceed here, we pray that thy divine help would be ministered to us. And we want to ask all these favors in Jesus' name. I think the next thing we want to attend to is to and uh, an appreciation uh, and after that appreciation a request has been made that the poem would be added to the program by one who came late so first of all we have the appreciation and then the poem would be added to that Come. Good morning and happy International Women's Day to all deserving women, all women out there. Inez Leomi Walcott was born on December 1st, 1932 to Ursula Etina Brathwaite and you Percival Ashby. She was her mother's fourth child from the six siblings who lived past their childhood years. She occupied that middle child space, which would apparently establish her role in life, to pull everyone along and to keep the family together. Inez was familiarly known as Omi or Mother Wally, but to us, she was Mummy. And as the grandchildren came along, she became Granny to all of us. She had five children, Cynthia, Merlene, Caroline, me, Yvette, and Andy. Seven grandchildren and one grandchild. Mommy went to school. Great grandchild, sorry. <laughs> Mommy went to school at the St. Martin's Primary School. I heard her mention her disappointment at not being able to go further in school, as for her family, that was not financially possible. However, that was not a deterrent to her because she strongly believed in education as the vehicle out of poverty and as a way of life. Mommy put her creativity to work and when she made and sold baskets, she did her dressing, she made clothes, helped her mother in the garden and cooked and sold food to bring in money for the family. She married Kenneth Alfonso Walcott in 1956 and got him involved in these endeavors as well. She took courses at the Girls Industrial Union and put that training to good use. She made the difficult decision to leave her young family
to travel to New York to study dietetics at the New York School of Dietetics. And then she worked in the dietary department at the U New York Hospital for Joint Diseases. I can imagine that that was no easy feat, but in true mommy style, she made it happen. With her training and some work experience under her belt, mommy returned home and landed the job of catering supervisor in the new kitchen at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. She continued in the food service throughout the various hospitals and retired as a senior food service supervisor at the geriatric hospital. She devoted her service to improving patient diets, food preparation, and the food ordering systems, and teaching the staff the correct way to carry out their tasks. Mommy's love for learning did not end there. I can remember Mommy attending math and English classes with Cynthia, Cynthia and Merlene at Richmond. After retirement, she took Spanish classes with me at the Venezuelan Institute. She took soft furnishing classes at the Bush Hall Resource Center with me and Cynthia, and was preparing to take piano classes with Shania, her first granddaughter, even as she started to lose her memory. And Andy recalled recently her taking a Know Your Car Auto Mechanics course with Merlene. You could say that mommy was the poster child for a lifelong learning long before it became a popular concept, and she made sure she passed that on to us too. I once read that smooth seas do not make skillful sailors, and mommy sailed through life with a dignity and determination that belied her actual circumstances, and she didn't travel alone. Whomever was willing or needed the help, she carried them along with her. She had a vision for herself and others around her, and she was able to touch many in her circle in a way that was special to each of us. I can only imagine the rough seas that shaped my mom. Mommy had a heart full of love, and she shared it with all whom she knew. She loved her family and doted on her grandchildren. I can remember those days when, as a little boy, Sean would call to complain for his mommy. Granny would take pride in pretending to make peace. After hearing both sides, all would be right again with a few words from Granny. And she couldn't wait for the weekend to come so she could have her little babies over. This love was extended beyond her immediate family. She was truly that rock of support for all of us, and we can say she built a strong foundation for us. I can recall how she encouraged her only sister Gwendolyn, Gwenny as she called her, to apply for work in the public service. Gwenny did it reluctantly, but I'm sure that when it was time for her to retire, my dear aunt, as we call her, recognized the value of that advice. Mommy rebuilt her house in spite of daddy's doubts and concerns that she was taking on. Sorry, she rebuilt her mother's house in spite of daddy's doubts and concerns that she was taking on too much. She was the one to oversee the construction of my uncle Percy's house while he lived in Germany. And she was right there with me and my husband as we built our home. She undertook these projects with that quiet determination and dignity which is so characteristic of her. Not one to complain, she would make the seemingly impossible seem so easy. She would just have a plan and get it done. I must say here that without knowing it at the time, she provided inspiration for Andy's career choice. He is now a civil engineer and project manager. She did all of this while looking after sick neighbors, encouraging and counseling other family members and looking after her own mother, especially when she fell ill. We recently shared a recollection of an evening when she had just come home from work when one of the children in the neighborhood was knocked down by a car. Mommy picked up his mother and him and drove them back down to the hospital and waited throughout the night with them. She did not leave them. She tapped into her influence with the doctors on duty to ensure that they were seen and then she brought them back home. Her mantra was, perseverance seldom fails. And daddy used to say that 
you would have to show her the ball that shot down Nelson. She never gave up. Mommy had four daughters. I was the last girl. When at 41 years old, her doctor advised her that she should abort a risky pregnancy, Mommy was not having it. Needless to say, she found a new doctor and the rest is history. We are a family of four girls and one boy. Mommy was the glue that held the family together. It was through her that her mother was able to travel to Panama to spend six months with her father who had not seen her since she was three years old. It was through Mommy that we got to know the USA side of the family and that we were able to keep up with Daddy's side in, of the family in Bahamas and got to spend many happy vacations with Daddy's sister and her family, the Westermans, in St. Peter and even got to know the St. George branch of the family. There was always a big welcome whenever family was visiting from overseas. Whether they were flying in for a vacation on business or just cruising by, mommy was the one they would all contact and they could not leave without paying us a visit. Mommy loved entertaining. And needless to say, the focal point of our family was food. Healthy and good tasting food. My sisters and I can recall how on bank holidays and weekends, our house was always full of mommy's friends. Friends from all walks of life. Mommy loved to plan what she would call a get-together, more food again. That was what Mommy loved and she did it well. She was in demand among those who tasted her food. She had to be the one to cater for their children's weddings and bake and decorate their wedding cakes too. And Mommy obliged, even if they could not afford, she did it from the heart. People would always come back for her rich fruit cake, whether at Christmas or some other occasion, and we were her helpers. Of course, she had to cater and provide the wedding cakes for her children's weddings as well, even when the wedding was overseas. Mommy was a hard worker. She was involved in a myriad of other projects, and she got us all involved too. Daddy would say that she was the supervisor by name and nature. She loved gardening and animal husbandry. And apart from pigs, we kept sheep. Goats, cows, broilers, lairds, ducks, turkeys, and even rabbits at some point. As a teenager, she got me into baking and selling cakes. She was the main marketer, of course. Before that, Merlene and Carolyn made money from their kitchen garden. Elaine followed in her footsteps as senior food service supervisor, and Andy was the beneficiary of her pig farming enterprise, which he has expanded and continues to make a success of. She was a firm but loving mother. I cannot end without mentioning how much she loved God. Her devotion to his word ran throughout everything she did and in her approach to life. It was her faith that got her through the difficult times and like everything else, she held on until the very end. It showed in her disposition even when she had lost her memory. She ensured that we all got a good foundation in the faith as well. Mommy was small in stature, but she was a giant to all who really knew her. For her, work was never done. She lived a full life. Even though her later years were impacted by dementia, this little woman achieved so much. The measure of her worth is counted not in terms of amassing wealth, but in the way she was able to reach out and touch so many lives in that most endearing and impactful way of hers. Many of you within the hearing of my voice know of what I am speaking. Your memories and your recollections over the past few weeks have confirmed this. We are now left with a whole lot to aspire to because she was such a special woman that among the five of us, we can each excel at one of her attributes and still not cover each facet of her character. We will continue to aspire to be like her. We give thanks for her life. We will continue to love you, Mom. You earned your rest. Rest in peace. Amen. Good morning, everyone. I am the latecomer. I am 
Lestro Antoine Fields are married to um, and Omi's nephew. I do not know her well, but I know of her. And this last night when I was hearing the obituary, I'm like, oh wow, what a woman, what a woman, what a phenomenal woman. And I actually edited that poem from Nan My Woman for her. And I saw it's so befitting all you heard just now to say this. Pretty woman wonder where her secret lie. She was cute, though not built to suit a fashion model size. But when she started to tell them, they think she's telling lies. It was in the reach of her arm, the span of her hip the stride of her step, the curl of her lips. She was a woman, phenomenally, phenomenal woman. That was she. She walked into a room, just as cool as you please. And to a man, the fellows stand or fall down to their knees. They swarm around her, a hive of honeybees, because it was the fire in her eyes and the flash of her teeth, the swing in her waist, and the joy in her feet. She was a woman, phenomenally, phenomenal woman. That was she. Men themselves have wondered what they saw in her. They tried so much, but they couldn't touch her inner mystery. When she tried to show them, they say they still can't see because it was in the arch of her back, the sun in her smile, and the ride of her breast, the grace of her style. She was a woman, phenomenally, phenomenal woman. That was she. Now you understand just why her head was never bowed. She didn't shout or jump about or have to talk real loud. When you saw her passing, it used to make you proud because it was in the click of her heels, the bend of her hair, the palm of her hands, and the need of her care. Cause she was a great woman, phenomenally phenomenal woman. That was she. Rest in peace and only. I'm just going to read a little from the third chapter of the book of Ecclesiastes. Actually, it's just a part of a verse I'm going to read. Verse 2, a time to be born and a time to die. And that's all I'm going to read. But there's a lot that we can think about. A time to be born and a time to die. Two events that we experience in lifetime. We all were born into the world and uh, some have gone on before us. We are yet alive, but it's in God's plan that we would die, and that's no mistake. It's in His plan that we should die. There's a Psalm 116 and verse 
and uh, one verse there says that it is precious in the sight of the Lord the death of his saints we would consider death as a very sad and sorrowful thing we wouldn't consider it as a precious thing but to the Lord the death of his saints is precious and the reason for that is that uh, they listen to his word they responded to it they began to live to please him and then the day of death is a very precious thing to the Lord death is like passing from one stage to another yes it brings sorrow and grief when a loved one is taken from us we have grief and we have pain and and we sorrow but if we can look at the bigger picture and uh, think and see as the Lord sees then we would understand why the death of his saints is precious to him in another chapter in the same book the writer says that the day of death is better than the day of one's birth now we might find that hard to accept because there's great rejoicing at uh, when a child is born into the world and there's great sorrow and grief when one is taken when one dies so how is it that the day of death can be better than the day of one's birth well the Lord plans it that way that the day of death should be better than the day of birth if we live to please him and to honor him to love him and to give him of our best each day then when we die we are going on to something better and uh, for those who love the Lord the day of death is better than the day of birth we are thankful for the memory of our sister she had a good long life and she did her very best to serve the Lord and to serve others and like we have been hearing already she was a very good example of what a child of God should be she loved the Lord today we have a measure of sorrow and grief in our heart because someone we knew very much and love very much is taken from us but we want to remember that the Lord has this is victory really for the Lord when one is taken one who loved and served him is taken this is victory this is not something to be sorry about and so we are so grateful for the remembrance of our sister 
And we would like to extend our condolences to the family and friends. We know that, uh, yes, this is a painful time, but we want to have the assurance in our hearts that she has gone on to something better. The thing that she lived for, uh, she's gone on to that thing. And we pray that while we are yet alive and while we have time, that we will make the most of our opportunities and give to the Lord that which is pleasing to him, may this be so. We now sing to him 105 Life short day, life short day. That's the name of the hymn, but I think it begins differently. Sweet and of the gospel so to my soul all things praise
I think you can follow the program. The musical tribute by a musical tribute by Amanda Fields. Is she here? Hmm? Amanda. the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see T'was grace that taught my heart to fear And grace my fears It, that grace appeared the hour I first believed through many dangers toils and the snares I have already come. Disgrace hath brought me safe thus far, and grace will Shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first be. This is followed by a poem by Neela Walker. Poem.
Phil. Oh, Granny. Farewell, Granny. Granny, I did not know you long. Memories of you fade in my youth. But I will learn of you from your auntie. I know you better from my aunties. Elaine, Marilyn, Callan, and Yvette. Your love is unforgettable. It still grows each day. Mother Wooly will live inside each of them. Granny gone from us that smiling face. Your cheerful, pleasant ways. The heart that wants so many a friend. In bygone happy days and to the very end. Your life was made beautiful by kindly deeds, forever busy helping hands always for others' needs. To a beautiful life comes a happy end. She died as she lived, everyone's friend. I wish I knew you when you were younger. Sean, Dario, Shania, Natonia, Aiden, Karis, Ariana, and even me. We wish we could have known you longer. We will keep you more treasured and make you proud, you'll see. From Daddy, every second with you made him better and stronger. Cooking, baking, cake icing, sewing, education, agriculture, hard work, integrity, patience, sharing, are, and fairness are some of the things you held dear. We will stay close to these, do not fear. We will always love and cherish you as your time has come to leave. The angels called and we say goodbye just like the sun gently rests down and the tranquil evening sky. Farewell, Granny. Thank you, thank you. The hymn suite is the rest. 317 in the hymn bell. Sweet is the rest. Sweet is the rest. Comes with dawn at last. After the night of dark defeat is past. And breaks the day.
read some verses from the 31st chapter of the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 31 and reading from verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is a far above rubies. The heart of her husband does safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ship. She bringeth her food from afar. She rises also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field and buys it. In the fruit of her hands she planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goes not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. She stretches out her hands to the poor, and she reaches forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with garlic. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry, her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates, when he sits among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen and sells it, and delivers her girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and her tongue is the law of kindness. She looks well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a man, a woman, that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Now, I don't have very much to say on that portion of Scripture, but I invite all who would care to read it for yourselves. But it fits very aptly to our sister. The things we have heard of her this morning, I didn't say them all, but I knew them mostly. And I, I, I could say amen to the things that I heard or said about her. Uh, uh, my relationship with her uh, was justified in the things that I heard said uh, about her, and they're true. They're not made... They're not flattering, they're good things, and right things. And, uh, I didn't know them all, but I, what I did know was convincing. There were more things were mentioned, more tributes were mentioned, more memories were shared that I, that I knew and appreciate. I think today we have had a wonderful illustration of what it means for a person who has let the Lord Jesus Christ into their lives and allowed him to graciously manifest the talents with which he was bestowed. And we're not going to weary you with a lot of scripture. You don't need it. You've heard enough to be convinced that there is something that works in us as individuals that only God can do. There are some things that works in us individually that only God can do. We can't make belief. 
I don't think our sister Inez make believe any of the attributes and contributions that she made to humanity. I don't believe it, but there were many. Uh, she was admirable in different respects, and it seemed to me that she, <laughs> she was most ad admirable in her household. And that's where a person needs to be mostly admirable in their household. And she was. I knew her for a long time, and I don't want to weigh you with any knowledge I have of her, but they're justified in the scripture. She lived by the book. It's not easy to live by the book and still be correct. Sometimes we put out little portion, and we live by that. But here our sister, I think is in keeping to say by her that she lived with the knowledge of the Christ that was dwelling in her. And we can't do too much, friend. We can become wishful thinkers, but it's only the Spirit of God dwelling in us that can make us anything that is, is more than human. Sometimes people say, and I discourage them from saying, I am just human. And they say that deliberately because they want to do something that would, 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 would be just be human. Defend themselves. I am just human. Listen, friend. Don't say that. God never intended you nor me to be just human. He wanted to put something in us that would make us a little more and a lot more than human. And I have every reason to believe this morning that our sister was not just human. There was a power working in our life that was reaching out to others. And that's not just human. To be just human is to live for yourself, me and me alone. Everything circles and cycles around me. But our sister was not like that for as much as I knew her and her things about her that I didn't know, I am convinced that she wasn't just human. Ladies and gentlemen, it is our privilege to be here and to celebrate the life of one that is an example in our society and in our community and in our worship. May the Lord help us that when we come to the end of our days, we can have said of us, well done. Is that enough? Well done. You agree? Well done. We're going to sing a hymn now and move to the graveside. I must have the Savior with me. I must have the Savior with me. But I dare not walk alone. Feel His presence near me. And His arms around me through.
Thank you. Okay. No proceed. The service in this little tent is finished. I will conclude the burial at the grave site. So you're free to move. feel like the sun is heavy here in my head. Uh, 
All right, we don't want you to stand in the sun indefinitely, so we want you to proceed and give you a chance. Now we're going to do it this way, we're going to have a scripture reading in keeping with the committal, and then we're going to have the word of prayer, and then we coffin will be lowered into the grave and then do we sing the hymns, the comforting hymns and after that the grave is covered you may want to witness the floral accompaniment so we do it like this if you would listen But of the times, First Thessalonians chapter 5, But of the times and the season, brethren, we have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves perfectly know the day of the Lord, so comes of the thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in the darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep as do others. Let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep sleep in the night, and they that be drunken be drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation. By our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together, and edify one another, even as also you do. That's the scripture reading, in keeping with the committal. Our brothers... Lord is not going to pray. Lord and Father, we give thanks to Thee for the opportunity to come to this place to listen for Thy voice that voice that would bring comfort to us, that would sober our hearts, cause us to think about life and death and eternity. We are thankful for thy great work in our lives, preparing us to be with thee and with thine for all eternity. Do accept our thanks for the many blessings that we have received from Thee and for promises that are yet to be fulfilled. We keep looking to You for help and pray that Thou will be gracious to us. Our times are in Your hands to do according to Your will. And we know that whatever you would do is done in righteousness. Do hear us, we pray. Remember kindly the relatives and others who would mourn today. We ask a special comfort for them. Do hear us now, we pray, and accept thanks for all things, for we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, while, while the coffin is being lowered into the grave, and that can take place at this point of time, please go ahead. We'll keep absolute silence as best we can until the coffin has reached its final resting place. And after that has happened, we will sing.
to sing to the, 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 the hymn called Home to Rest. The first hymn at the graveside is called Home to Rest. All home to rest beyond the veil of reaping, the loving Father he has willed us so. Cheered by thy voice, in the past be clothed, the other God of comfort and delight. And when our heart in mourning of the truth, The next hymn is only remembered, fading away like the stars of the morning, only remembered, fading away like the stars of the morning. Losing their light in the glorious sun, thus would we pass from the earth and destroying. Only remembered by what we have done. Only remember. Only remembered, only remembered by what we have done. Uh, would we pass from the earth and destroy them? Only remembered by what we have done. Shall we be missed oh, by others succeeded? Reaping the fields we in spring time of sun. Yes, but the showers must pass from their labor. Ever remembered by what they have done. Only remember, only remember, only remember by what we have done. Thus would we pass from the earth and destroy 
only remembered by what we have done. Only the truth that in life we have spoken. Only the seeds that on earth we have sown. These shall pass onward when we are forgotten. Truth of the heart of it, what we have done. Only remember, only remember, only remember by what we have done. Only remembered by what we have done. Oh, when the Savior shall make up his jewels, when the bright crowns of rejoicing are won, then shall his weary and faithful disciples all be remembered by what they have done. Only remember, only remember, only remembered by what we have done. From the earth and the soil. Only remembered by what we have done. <clears throat> the next hymn is when life is ended. When life is ended, and I must travel through death dark chambers, I need not fear. If I have Jesus to guard and guide me, I'll walk securely with one so dear.
<coughs> we have one more. Yeah, one more, yeah. yeah. We sing the last hymn on the hymnal before the laying on of the wreath. You probably wait a little before we do that. Sing the hymn while the wreaths are being laid. Abide with me, fast falls the even time. Abide with me, fast falls the even time. Saw so many rays, Cloud. back if need be.
Nicely done. How do you old man? The old man dead every second, sir. And the son? Yeah. I was at the son funeral and the old man attended this man's. Huh? All right, all right, all right. Attention, please. Attention, please. You have witnessed the conclusion of a good life. You have witnessed the conclusion of a good testimony. And today we believe that heaven is witnessing the same. Thanks for your cooperation in every respect. And I would like to suggest to you that you take with you the memories of a faithful woman. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. <laughs>